Hello Satnam, it's me Shakti Sundari and I'm back with you today for the next reading from the Radiant Sutras. Um, I'm sitting in my room in the Brymore Academy in, uh, where am I? <laughs> Cannington in Somerset, Somerset, just uh, looking out to some fields and some barns with animals, cows and goats and chickens. This is a farm academy in Somerset, and I'm here for the week for uh, the One World Summer Festival, which is a beautiful festival for people of all ages um, from all over the world with a focus on macrobiotic food and holistic workshops. And I'm going to be teaching workshops here every day. So um, it's really nice to be out of London and somewhere with a lot more space and green and nature. So I've missed, missed doing the sutra today and looking forward to having a little space in my day to read. Um, so yeah, and I've just been looking at today's sutra. It's bringing in a whole other quality of meditation today. So this is good. It's exciting. It's something completely different. Um, I'm going to go straight into it because I have to go to a teacher meeting after this. I don't have a load of time. Today we're on Yukti verse 64. So let me read from the Sanskrit. It's really beautiful. The sounds are really beautiful today. <clears throat> Yukti verse 64. Evam eva durnishayam. Krishna Paksha Agame Chiram Taimiram Bhavayan Rupam Bharavam Rupam Eshyati. And I'm just going to read that again. Evam Eva Durnishayam Krishna Paksha Agame Chiram Taimiram Bhavayan Rupam Bharavam Rupam Eshyati. And the translation today is really quite long and, um, yeah, it's different. So, secrets are hidden in darkness and difficult nights. You awaken into a pang of aloneness, a howl of separation. This is the call of the dark one, the roar of life seeking its source. The union you long for is within reach. Throw off all hesitation. Become one with the fear. Plunge into the uncanny blackness, eyes wide open, as if there were no other choice. Vibrating with fierce tenderness, Breathe intimately with the Lord of infinite space. Woo! Yeah, wow. So this is a powerful practice. This is a powerful meditation. This takes us into new, uh, new areas of awareness and a whole new practice compared to all of the other sutras that we've read so far. And it really speaks to me at the moment in terms of my own life and my own experience and, and also what I know from previous experience. It is this, it is that when, when we encounter something difficult, when we encounter something painful, when we encounter an emotion that feels dark that is the opposite to what we imagine to be a good or happy or a positive emotion or a feeling state or a being state so often there is the tendency in our culture to want to escape it and run away from it to resist it to block it to change to flip out of it into something that's deemed to be positive but actually if we have the courage if we allow ourselves to look into that blackness and to be with the shadow, that's where the learning comes, that's where the revelation comes, that's where the reawakening and the rebirth 
comes from. It's like there's that saying about the lotus growing from the mud. We have to be willing to be right down there in the mud for the lotus to blossom. So let's just go through this again. Secrets are hidden in darkness and difficult nights. So you might have heard the expression, the dark night of the soul, when we go through that stage in our spiritual evolution or our life, when we feel hopeless, where we feel abandoned, where we feel like everything's gone wrong. Um, I'm speaking from personal experience. I've been in that situation many times in my last, last 10 years of my life as I've been journeying on this quest for union with the beloved and union with God. Um, so many times I've been down on my knees, feeling abandoned, feeling betrayed, feeling hopeless, feeling like completely overwhelmed with this dark energy. And yet I know that from experience, this is so true. Secrets are hidden in the darkness and difficult nights. It's from those difficult, difficult moments, from those feelings of absolute bleakness that I have found a reawakening, that I have found an insight, that I have found a truth, that I have found a learning, that I have found a heart expansion, that I have found something new for me to be aware of in my own being that I hadn't seen until that point. You awaken into a pang of aloneness, a howl of separation. You know, and this is the eternal state, really, of the human when we feel separate from the divine it is that feeling of separation that keeps us questing for the beloved as we search and search and search. Again, I speak from experience and also from my own learning. It's this quest, this searching to fill that sense of emptiness and aloneness, which can only really be fulfilled when we meet ourselves within ourselves and we recognize the divine within us. So often people go searching, they go searching through love with another, they go searching through drugs, through alcohol, through food, through addiction, through overworking, but the hole is never filled. There's always that ultimate sense of aloneness when we're in bed on our, on our own at night that comes, that creeps up upon us until we recognize that we are already one, that we are already whole, that we are already love. This is the call of the dark one the roar of life seeking its source. Indeed, yes, the union you long for is within reach. So this is to say, at that very point when you feel like giving up, at that very point when you feel everything is dark and everything is wrong in your life, actually you're so close to a moment of breakthrough. And again, I know this because I've had so many breakdowns and breakthroughs. Not literally, I've not had a literal breakdown, but... I've definitely been through many dark nights of the soul and every single time has been a breakthrough and an awakening and an enlightenment. It's the roar of life seeking its source and each time the soul has awakened to a new knowing, a new level of opening, a new, more expanded perspective and a greater experience of oneness with life. This is the roar of life seeking its source. The union you long for is within reach. So here is the, the meditation. Here is the practice. Throw off all hesitation. Become one with the fear. That's, <laughs> that's going to take courage. Become one with the fear. So no resistance, no running away, no pushing away, just meeting it meeting it, allowing it, feeling it fully. This is what every healing path tells you. Feel it fully. If you do not feel it fully, you will never heal. You have to feel it fully to release it. Throw off all hesitation. Become one with the fear. Plunge into the uncanny blackness. Eyes wide open. So, of course, the temptation is to close our eyes, right, and go, ee to clench the body to contract ourselves we're being invited to be so brave that we keep our eyes wide open and we look our fear right in the face and then 
as if there were no other choice. Well, there isn't really, because if we do not look it in the face this time, it will come back and back and back and back until we are ready, until we're ready to see, until we're ready to face. Vibrating with fierce tenderness. So sometimes when we allow this, there can be a response in the physical body, a shaking, a tremoring, literally, as we face our fear. And if we are able to stay open to it, it will move through because it is actually just energy. And actually the thing that we most feared will suddenly be revealed as not being that frightening at all if we're just able to face it. Vibrating with fierce tenderness, breathe intimately with the Lord of infinite space. So that's kind of the point we can get to on the other side of the fear, on the other side of the darkness, if we're able to stay present to it, to breathe intimately with it. We get to the other side of that moment of fear, of darkness, and there can be an opening into a whole new expansive vista of awareness of peace, actually, of expansion, of moving beyond whatever it was that was holding us back. But it takes the courage of a wholehearted commitment. It takes the courage of a whole-bodied embrace. Yeah, each of these each of these meditations asks that of us to be total, to be total in all that we do. And it's only in that willingness to be total that we, in a sense, are able to reap the rewards that come on the other side of the practice. So this is a big one. So for anyone who is going through a moment of doubt, a dark night of the soul, a moment of fear, questioning, feeling hopeless, we all go through it, so you're not alone. I've known those places so many times, and even in these last few weeks, I've been really having to look at my own shadow very much. And um, what is there to be afraid of, really, other than the light that's on the other side? Yeah. So that's today's beautiful sutra, and I know, having looked ahead, that tomorrow's is more of the same, but slightly different. So we're going into the darkness <laughs> in order to embrace our light. Thank you for being with me, everybody, and um, looking forward to speaking with you again tomorrow. Satnam and much love.